Hey everyone, I thought I'd make a behind the scenes video for the intro animation of my Floodgate Firefight review since I got a lot of messages asking various things about it. The main question I got was, did I buy multiples of the Floodgate set? The answer is, no I didn't. Basically, I put the main Floodgate walls together in a certain configuration and behind that I made a massive wall of grey bricks. The grey bricks are off-brand Lego bricks I got online, so they were way cheaper than buying official bricks. So then I shot all the scenes I needed from that camera angle, and then I rebuilt the set in the opposite way round so that I could film all the shots I needed from that angle. It does limit how wide I can film because I don't have a huge set. To light this animation, I wanted to imitate the kind of light you see in factories that shine directly down. So basically all of this animation was shot with this kind of lighting. I recently got this extra bar for my light stands that lets me hang a light directly above the set. I added a soft box onto the light to, well, soften the light. The exterior shots were simply made using the tan base plates I have and then tacking a piece of blue card onto the wall and shining another light onto that in order to make it look like a bright sky. See, the tricky thing about these animated review intros is there's usually so much I want to add to them, but I also don't want to show very much that isn't directly from the set. So I could have added elites helping Master Chief or Marines also helping, but you just don't get that with the set so it would feel a bit like false advertising. I'm willing to add stuff like that if I think it enhances the animation a lot, like the elite and arbiter driving the forklift was pretty funny, but I tried to keep other things to a minimum, like only using the other elite as a dead body. Speaking of adding things, clearly I added doors that don't come with the set. The doors are actually pieces that were part of the landing platform from the old Falcon set, I just wedged them between the brown door frame and some grey bricks so that I could slide them apart. To add in the torch shining from Master Chief's assault rifle, I tried out this new torch I got which has a variable focus so I can make the beam bigger or smaller. I set it up on a stand so it would stay still and I could move it each frame. Annoyingly, the frequency of the torch's LED meant it had a rolling shutter effect on camera and it would appear as different brightness levels between each photo and flicker. So for the rest of the review, I switched to my older torch, which is why the look of the torchlight changes from the beginning onwards. But even that older torch flickers sometimes. The search for the perfect torch continues. For the little light on the end of Chief's gun, I simply used one of the light flare effects that came with my editing software, HitFilm Express. I manually went through each frame and tracked it to the movement of the gun. When I animated the parallax shot with the camera spinning around the chief, instead of moving the camera, I moved the whole set instead. This gives a lot more control in how the final shot comes out. I made sure to have a lamp pole move across the foreground so that it added a sense of perspective and depth to the shot as well. I really need to add more camera movement in my animations, and I learnt a lot from doing this one. The torch was added onto the base so that it moved with the set, and it was meant to be adding the light which would be reflecting onto Chief's armour from his flashlight. Annoyingly, I didn't plan the shot too well, and you can see there's a big reflection from the torch at the end of the shot, and the shot wasn't really long enough to cut that out. Always plan the full shot out. Now let's move on to the fire effects. I used little pieces of cotton wool and the torches I had came with some coloured filters you could put on the end. So I shone red light onto the cotton wool balls. This effect was heavily inspired by Dank Motion Studios from a video he made using that same technique, which looks amazing. I still need some practice at it, but I just kept the torch on it and made sure the majority of the image was correctly exposed and then the torch would make the cotton wool overexposed, which made it look like it was glowing. Speaking about lights, 
I used some LEDs to light up the fusion coils. I bought these LEDs from lightmybrick.co.uk. I'm not sponsored, I bought them myself. They're fairly premium and there's definitely other options available, but I wanted mine to last and so far they have. I ran the wires underneath the set and made the colour change to red when I wanted the fusion coil to explode. To make the flood elite form jump, I used the classic technique of holding it up with a rod and then erasing the rod from each frame by adding a mask over it in hit film. At first, I made the Elite fall really slowly and I had to cut a bunch of frames out so he actually looked like he was falling quickly. Like I said in the actual review, I added some bricks to make sure the cargo container didn't move while animating the rest of the set. But to make the container swing when I wanted it to, I used a rod to hold it and I actually moved the container frame by frame myself. I made it look like it was swinging and luckily I think it turned out really well. So yeah, that's basically it. If there's anything else you'd like to know, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to respond to everything. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed and maybe learnt something useful. Take care.